We got one more project in before the end of the gardening season, a new garden bed. And I'm gonna show you what we did to overcome a challenge in this area. This area originally just had two blood good Japanese maples planted in it. And earlier in this gardening season, I decided that I wanted to add a few more plants to make an island bed in this area here. However, George wasn't keen on the idea of having such a large bed. Um, so we played around with some arrangements of plants to see what we would like. And originally, it wasn't looking good. Back in June, we had planted three ivory halo red twig dogwoods because they are water loving plants. And this here is a very wet area. In the fall and in the spring, when we get a lot of rain, the area gets pretty saturated. And so we needed plants that could tolerate wet soils. And when we planted those ivory halo red twig dogwoods, they were kind of by themselves in the center. And what we did temporarily to kind of get some ideas for the shape of bed we wanted is place some of the stone, the edging stones that we normally use around our trees um, to kind of outline where the dogwoods were planted but it looked terrible. It looked like a triangle. Um, you know, when you rack up your pool balls, it kind of reminded me of one of those and it just wasn't pleasant. And so we kind of had to put that project on the back burner to give us some time to kind of think it through and decide ultimately what to do here. Now we have a couple of challenges in this area because of the you know, water that we get, um, we got a lot of mulch runoff. And we noticed that particularly with these Japanese maples. We had some mulch on the top of the maples and inevitably the mulch would always run off and we would lose the mulch. So every spring we had to reapply. So we knew that we had to come up with a solution that would retain our mulch when the water table got a little too high so that we wouldn't continue to lose mulch with wash off. So what we decided um, was to think of something that we could edge this bed in that would sort of keep the mulch in, um, essentially building some kind of small wall. And so the edging stones that we had used all around the property weren't going to work for this particular application because those stones are recessed into the ground. And so they wouldn't help with retaining the mulch. Here's the edging option that I went with. It is an eight foot metal edging and it's about uh, four inches high and it comes with these metal stakes at the end that you would take off to secure the edging to the lawn or to the ground and then we bought these additional stakes as well because we're going to be making some curves we wanted to make sure we had some extra stability so we ended up buying a couple of additional stakes I think this is going to work really well um, because this is going to be a fairly large bed. We ended up buying 80 feet worth and because we're connecting the two Japanese maples with the bed in the center, we needed quite a few lengths of this. We ended up getting 10 lengths all together. When we weren't sure what to do with this bed, we did know that the lawn did have to go because if we were going to make an, an island bed here, we were gonna to have to remove the sod one way or another. So what we decided was to put down some sheets of cardboard and start a process called sheet mulching, which is essentially putting down cardboard so that it can smother your grass by not letting any light to it, eventually the grass dies off. So we had some pieces of cardboard in that area for about four months and it did help break down the grass some. So when we were ready to work in this area, we removed those pieces of cardboard just so that it would be easier for us to kind of get the grass down even lower. George went through and cut the grass with the weed eater first and then he went and did a couple of passes with the lawnmower. Once the area was prepped, I started all of my planting and I worked on getting all of my shrubs into the ground and the grasses. I dug some holes here as placeholders for some Carl Forrester reed grass that I'm gonna dig up and divide near my shed. I think it'll add a nice element of texture in this bed against all of these other shrubs. And now we're gonna start working on securing the metal edging, giving it some shape and some curves. I came to my neighbor's driveway because their driveway is higher than ours so that I can get a different vantage point of the um, edging and it's looking pretty good, nice and gradual, and um, so far it's pretty easy to work with, so we're gonna keep going. 
Well, on the end of these pieces of edging, there are some perforated areas here with two stakes. So you have to get a pair of pliers and bend these off. Like that. And then this gives you two pins. So these pins are for the seams. So see right here it has a notch. You would then take another piece of paneling, flip it over the opposite at opposite side like I have here. And then you use these pins you just broke off to make the the, the seam coupling. Yeah, to kind of connect it. To connect it. And then I'm just temporarily placing them right now just in case we have to make adjustments. Well, we're running out of daylight and energy, but we actually just have um, a little bit more to go on the outline. We're gonna be short just a little bit. And so um, what we did is George took a ride over to Lowe's. He's gonna return some of the extra stakes that we bought because we're actually not gonna end up needing them. These pieces of metal edging actually come with plenty of stakes. So he's gonna return that and he's going to get a four, four foot section so that we can finish closing off the outline on this bed. Those metal edging pieces come in four foot and eight foot lengths. So a four foot section should do what we need it to do to get this outline wrapped up. While he's doing that, I ended up digging up the three Carl Forrester grasses over by the shed. And I'm gonna divide each one of these in half. So from three, I'll get six. And I'm gonna do a clump of three or a grouping of three here and a grouping of three on the other side. And then all we'll have left to do is put down some cardboard or newspaper and some mulch and we'll call this project done. So a little bit more to go. It is now the next day and we were able to finish the outline with the metal edging. And now what we're doing is we're using some cardboard that we've accumulated, as well as some paper, grocery bags, newspaper, any type of material um, like the ones I just listed will work to kind of do a sheet mulching. We're using it here as weed suppression and we're gonna place the cardboard and newspapers and paper bags um, kind of layering over each other and overlapping seams. And the goal is to let this break down and finish killing off any of the grass that is in this area. And so we're doing that and what we do is we leave a collar, I'll show you, or space around each of the plants so that they have room to breathe and water can get to the roots and you're not suffocating your plant. And we have the overlapping pieces of cardboard and then we're putting mulch over it to kind of weight it down because we'll sometimes get some gusts of wind. We don't want them blowing around. So that's what we're gonna finish doing and then we will show you what it looks like. And here's where we ended up with the mulch. So we are going to need at least 10 more bags. So we are going to leave it here for now. Let this settle. We're due to get some rain this afternoon. And then we are going to finish off the rest. By the end of the week, we'll pick up some mulch and lay a little bit more cardboard and wrap this part up. Now I'm gonna give you a little tour of what I planted in this new island bed. Here in the corner, I added a grouping of Carl Forrester reed grass. I actually had three of them that were pretty good size over by my shed. And what I did was I dug those up and I divided each one of them. So from three, I made six and I put a grouping of three on this end and a grouping of three on the other end. And I think these will be really beautiful here for some movement and some texture and to give kind of a vertical element to this bed. The three shrubs that actually started the whole project, the ivory halo red twig dogwood, they are a water loving plant. So they will do well in an area that stays a little bit more wet or has a little bit more moisture. So um, I was happy to plant these here. They have a really pretty variegated foliage and the red twigs provide winter interest. So we have a grouping of three planted in this bed. I also added two plants which I found over the summer at Lowe's on clearance. I had originally bought one and I liked it so much that I went and picked up a second one. And these are a first editions plant and they're called Iceberg Alley Sage Leaf Willow. And what attracted me to them was this really beautiful blue foliage. They almost look like eucalyptus. And I think it'll provide a really pretty color contrast with this blue foliage in this bed. 
And for an element of wintergreen interest or evergreen interest, I picked up a holly. Now I did not have a holly in my garden and typically with hollies you need two in order for them to pollinate and get berries. But a few of my neighbors have hollies so I'm hoping that the birds will do the pollinating for us. But if not, next year I'll plan on picking up a second holly. But this one here is a pyramidal shape tree and it stays pretty compact at only about four to five feet wide and 12 to 15 feet tall. And this one is called holly sentinel dragon now the bed looks kind of empty but you have to account for growth so all of these things are going to grow over the next couple of seasons and i think that this is going to mature really really beautifully the only other thing that i want to add or the other plant that i would like to add to this garden bed is an element of yellow and i plan to do that with my acorus the um, sweet flag the ogon sweet flag that i have in another area of my garden now i didn't want to divide it this year because it's doing so well right now that i figured i would would let the cardboard under here break down the rest of the grass and either next spring or next fall I can transplant some of that over to this area and create a little grouping of a yellow accent here as well as here. We ultimately decided on this edging because we knew that it would help retain this mulch. It essentially created a wall and so our mulch as long as we keep it to about three inches the siding here is four inches so it should be just enough to keep the mulch in the bed and keeping it from washing away. Now when it comes to edging options and creating a new bed, um, you do have some, some options. The first one being removing the sod and creating a trench to create an edge all around, a, all around your garden bed. You can also use the edging stones, which is what we were using around all of our trees. And those are a little less expensive than say using this metal edging. But because of the issue that we had here where we would get a lot of wash off from mulch, we needed to create a berm style bed. And while this isn't a true berm because it really isn't built up it is enough of a berm where we can retain our mulch by the use of this edging creating a wall i'm glad to have gotten this project in i'm always excited to add a new garden bed my husband not so much but um yeah now that it's here we're really happy with it um, and he agrees that it does look nice so that's always good but see it did take us four months to get back to this project we started in june not really knowing what to do with the shape and sometimes you just need to step back take some time think things through a little bit more and then eventually the solution comes to you so i hope that you've enjoyed checking out our new garden bed thanks for hanging out and i'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching this video if you liked it please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon